our uh, second speaker is Irene Zhang from uh, University of Washington. She's a, a current uh, fourth year PhD student. Uh, she will talk about building con uh, these transactions here, uh, with inconsistent reputation. Irene. Okay. Can you, can you hear me? Okay, great. Thank you, Haibo. This is probably the first time I've never had to tell the person introducing me how to pronounce my last name. <laughs> Um, okay, great. So uh, Marcos talked a bit about uh, how we want a SQL interface for our storage systems. I'm going to talk about how we can provide uh, high-performance distributed transactions uh, for your SQL or non-SQL system. Um, this is work with my co-authors at the University of Washington. Okay, so let's say that I've decided uh, being a PhD student isn't going to bring me any fame or fortune, and I'm going to build instead a new application to allow people to help uh, share their photos of baby tapers with each other. Now, your first question might be, what's a taper? Well, in addition to being the name of our system, a taper is a large pig-like mammal that is particularly adorable when it's a baby. You're, okay. <laughs> you might have a slightly more relevant question for me, which is, where are you going to store all of these pictures of your baby tapers? Well, like many application programmers today, I'm going to rely on a distributed storage system. A distributed storage system is going to allow me to uh, scale up my application as I acquire more baby taper photos by partitioning my baby taper photos across many machines. It's also going to uh, help me make sure that I don't lose any of these important baby taper photos by replicating each of my partitions for fault tolerance. So in order to make it really easy for me to build my uh, new application, I might want a storage system that provides distributed transactions. So as an example, distributed transactions are really going to allow me to make sure that all of my friends see my baby taper photos or none of my friends. And this ensures that I don't have some very angry friends at, you know, for not sharing my baby taper photos. Okay, this is a little bit of a contrived example. Uh, but you could see how some, a guarantee like that might be important if I were building a medical or financial application. Um, unfortunately, distributed transactions end up being quite expensive. So on every transaction, the storage system has to coordinate across every partition that's participating in the transaction using a protocol like two-phase commit, using some distributed transaction protocol. And then, after this, the storage system is going to have to coordinate again within each partition using a replication protocol like Paxos. All of this extra distributed coordination is going to end up increasing the latency of my new application and decreasing the throughput. So this is no good. In our, in our project that I'm going to talk about today, Taper, uh, we focused on how to reduce the amount of coordination required for distributed transactions. Our key insight is that existing distributed storage systems waste work by combining a transaction protocol and a replication protocol that both have strong consistency guarantees. Instead, we're going to co-design a new transaction protocol that's going to enforce a linearizable transaction ordering, but on top of a replication layer that's completely unordered. And this is going to allow us to reduce the cost of distributed transactions for applications like my baby taper app. So in the rest of the talk, I'm going to explain exactly why existing systems use strong consistency at both layers and what this ends up costing them in terms of performance. Then I'm going to introduce inconsistent replication, or IR, which is our new uh, unordered replication protocol. Then I'm going to talk about TAPER, the transactional application protocol for inconsistent replication which is a new linearizable transaction protocol that's designed to work with IR, which is completely unordered. And finally, I'm going to show the performance benefits of our new co-design of Taper and IR. OK, so existing uh, 
transactional storage systems generally want to support three high-level guarantees. The first is that they want to provide fault tolerance for application data. The next guarantee is that they want to be able to scale up as the size of application data grows. And then finally, they want to provide a linearizable ordering for transactions. Now, the typical system today is going to divide the responsibilities for these three guarantees between two layers, a distributed transaction protocol layer and then a replication layer. So for example, the replication layer is going to provide fault tolerance, and then the distributed transaction protocol is going to provide scalability, and it's going to enforce that linearizable transaction ordering. However, when you look at existing systems like Spanner, um, which was a recent Google system, or Hyperdex Warp, or MDCC, a recent system from MIT, all of these systems also integrate a strong replication protocol, which means that they enforce a linearizable ordering at the replication layer as well. So in my next couple of slides, I'll talk about why this is the case and what this ends up costing existing systems. So as I mentioned before, when you have a transactional storage system, it's going to run a transaction protocol, a distributed transaction protocol, across the partitions. And then within each partition, it's going to run a replication protocol. Now, when you use a replication protocol that's strong, like Paxos, this replication protocol is going to ensure that all of the operations execute as if they're executing on a single machine. So from the point of view of this transaction protocol, each partition, even though it's made up of a number of replicas, is going to look like it's a single machine. And this is great because it means that we can use essentially any existing transaction protocol, just slap it on top, and it's going to end up working. And this is great because it makes things simple for the system designer. Unfortunately, this usability is going to end up costing. So on every transaction, we have to send the transactions first to a leader in each partition that's participating in the transaction if we're using a strong replication protocol. So in this case, I have a pink transaction and a blue transaction. The blue transaction involves all three partitions, and then the pink transaction involves just the right two partitions. So we've sent the transactions to the leader in each partition, and the leaders ordered the transactions. And then the strong replication protocol is going to ensure that this ordering is maintained across the replicas as well. This means that in order to commit a single transaction, this transactional storage system with strong replication is going to need at least two round trips. It also means that each partition is going to end up having a leader that's, that needs to process more operations than the other replicas in the partition, which means it can end up being a bottleneck. So we took a look at this and we said, okay, this is quite expensive. You have a lot of coordination going on here. What can we do to make this faster? What would happen if we just eliminated consistency from the replication layer? Would we still be able to ensure a linearizable transaction ordering at the storage level? If we wanted to do that, what would we need instead from the replication layer? And would we be able to provide that as efficiently as strict ordering? So in the rest of my talk, I'm going to explain how with Taper and IR, we answer all of these questions. So, in the next section of my talk, I'll cover inconsistent replication, what guarantees we decided it needs to provide, and how we provide those guarantees efficiently. Inconsistent replication, unlike existing replication protocols, is completely unordered. Instead of agreeing to an ordering for operations, the replicas agree to a result that's going to be returned to the application. Now note here that the application I'm talking about is not your end user application like my baby taper app. It's actually another protocol, another higher level protocol. So I'm going to call it an application protocol. So to get a little bit more concrete about IR, let's look exactly at what guarantees it provides in a more formal manner. 
So IR gives this guarantee, instead of an ordered log, it gives a, a, an abstraction of an unordered operation set. For each operation in the set, IR is going to provide three guarantees. It's going to provide fault tolerance for every operation in the set and its results. It's going to provide that at least a majority of the replicas will agree to any result that we return to the application protocol. And it's going to ensure that every operation sees every previously added operation to the operation set on at least one of the replicas. Now, for those of you in the audience who are familiar with replication protocols, the first guarantee seems pretty standard, right? But the last two might be a little bit puzzling. So I'm going to talk about exactly why we chose these guarantees for IR. IR's guarantees are chosen very carefully to ensure that a higher level protocol or an application protocol like Taper is able to detect and avoid uh, conflicts without requiring operation ordering. So to give you an idea of how this works, I'll show what happens when you have two transactions that are going to be sent to this single group of replicas. So IR is going to ensure that every transaction executes at least at a majority of the replicas. So in this example, the blue transaction is at the left two replicas, and then the pink transaction is at the right two replicas. Now by quorum intersection, we can ensure that at least one replica sees both transactions, so that if there's a conflict between the two transactions, at least one of them is going to abort. Now finally, IR is going to ensure that if we decide that the pink transaction is going to commit, and the blue transaction is going to abort, IR will preserve that result across failures. Okay? Now let's take a look at how IR actually provides these guarantees. So on every operation, IR will send the operation to the replicas, execute the operation, and then collect the results. If the results from a quorum of the replicas match, then we'll consider the operation to be successful and we'll return the result to the application protocol. Now, of course, as you can see, you might execute operations at inconsistent replicas where the results end up not matching. In this case, we'll return all of the results back to the application protocol and the application protocol will select one of the results which will then commit to the replicas before returning to the application protocol. Okay, so this was a very, very fast stroll through the guarantees of IR and how it provides them. Let's take a look at what the pros and cons of using this new protocol are. Well, the first pro is that it's low latency. Uh, IR can complete an operation in a single round trip. And even its worst case is two round trips, which makes it the same as the common case for a strong replication protocol. IR doesn't require any uh, coordination across replicas on operations, and it doesn't need a leader because it has no ordering. Now, on the downside, uh, IR is not as general as strong replication, so you can't support things like state machine replication, which makes it easy to build things on top of uh, strong replication protocols. You can't support a strongly ordered log. Um, as you'll see when I talk about taper, Basically, any application that's going to be layered on top of IR needs to be very, very carefully designed. Fortunately, uh, we don't anticipate that end user applications are going to have to end up dealing with this, because IR, we imagine, will always be integrated as part of a distributed system. So, for example, my baby Taper app is not going to have to understand how IR works, but when I talk about Taper, the transaction application protocol for inconsistent replication, it will have to be designed carefully to be used with IR. Okay, so now that I've gone through IR, let's move on to talking about Taper uh, and how it uses IR, how it leverages those guarantees that I just described in order to provide really high performance distributed transactions. 
So TAPER is a new coordination protocol that's designed explicitly to work with IR's unordered operations. It provides the same linearizable transaction ordering that you get from strong transaction systems like Spanner. However, it's able to commit transactions in a single round trip. Uh, Taper uses two-phase commit across the partitions, and it relies on IR for fault tolerance within each partition. So when an application submits a transaction to Taper, Taper will replicate the transaction within each partition using IR. Since IR doesn't have any ordering, these transactions are just going to go directly to the replicas. And so you can see here, Taper with IR is going to be able to commit transactions in a single round trip, and it can avoid that leader bottleneck that we saw in our original transactional protocol on top of strong replication. Now, you might have noticed that there's a bit of a problem here. Uh, IR also provides a lot of challenges for Taper. You, as you can see, uh, you might have some replicas within a single partition that can miss transactions that the other replicas have chosen to commit. You can also have replicas receiving transactions out of order, and it might be possible that all of the replicas in a single partition have incomplete transaction logs. In the next couple of slides, I'll go through exactly how Taper deals with these problems. Taper uses optimistic concurrency control to detect conflicts between transactions. So the way OCC works is, for every pair of transactions, you check that pair for conflicts. And that means that these OCC checks don't have to happen on a single node. So I'll show you how this works with this example. I have this orange transaction here that's already been committed. And then I'm going to commit this, these pink and blue transactions. Now, as you'll notice, none of the three replicas in this storage partition have all of the transactions. However, every pair of transactions is still being checked correctly for OCC conflicts. The next challenge that Taper has to tackle is that IR doesn't have any ordering, right? So Taper needs an efficient way to order transactions. What we chose to do was to use loosely synchronized clocks at the clients. The clients use these clocks to pick timestamps for their transactions, and then attach the timestamp to the transaction before sending it to the replicas. When the replicas receive the transactions, they'll commit the transactions in timestamp order, regardless of when they get the transaction. So this makes it much, much more likely that the replicas will actually return the same result, even if they re receive transactions out of order. The final thing we have to deal with is if replicas miss transactions altogether. And we cope with this problem by using a multi-version store. So every version of a key in, a, in Taper is tagged with the timestamp of the transaction that committed that version. So later, if you have an inconsistent replica that's missing a transaction, it can get that transaction from one of the other replicas and then insert it into that version store. It's still going to land in the same place in the version store, so this ensures that over time the replicas will converge and eventually become consistent, even though they're processing these transactions all in different orders. You might have also noticed that it's possible for the clients to read at an inconsistent replica, right? So you might read at a replica that just didn't receive one of the transactions. Our OCC checks are going to make sure that that transaction doesn't commit if it's going to violate the linearizable transaction ordering. And we'll see in our evaluation section exactly how these IR inconsistencies affect Taper's abort rate. So now that I've talked about all of this complexity surrounding our co-design of IR and Taper, let's take a look at what we get out of it. So we know that IR and Taper are fast. Provided that a quorum of the replicas in each partition agree, we can commit transactions in a single round trip. We can, only, we can also still provide very strong guarantees. 
So we're still going to be able to enforce a linearizable transaction ordering, and we're going to be able to do this for general purpose read-write transactions. So not many transactions or a different kind of limited transaction model. It's very general purpose, and we're going to enforce the strongest possible guarantees. And best of all, none of the applications have to see this complexity. The complexity of IR and TAFER together are completely hidden behind the transaction layer. So from the application's point of view, TAFER looks like a pretty normal transaction protocol that's providing strong guarantees that just happens to be a little faster. Okay, in the final portion of my talk, I'll talk about uh, experimentally what we found we can gain in performance from our co-design of IR and TAPER. We wanted to answer three key questions with our measurement of TAPER. The first question was, do IR and TAPER improve performance compared to a conventional transaction protocol on top of a strong replication layer? The next question we wanted to answer was, how do IR inconsistencies affect TAPER's abort rate? And then finally, we wanted to compare TAPER and IR to some widely used weak consistency systems like MongoDB and Redis. We implemented TAPER and IR in a transactional key value store. We tested our implementation using two workloads. Uh, the first is a synthetic workload based on a clone of Twitter that was designed by the Redis people. And the next one is YCSBT, which is a transactional version of the widely used YCSB key value store benchmark. We ran our experiments on Google Compute Engine, and this was pretty cool. We didn't actually have to do anything. We found that the default clock synchronization that was available in the Google Compute Engine VMs was more than sufficient for our needs. So we actually didn't require any special equipment for our loosely synchronized clocks. Okay, let's take a look at some graphs. So the first question we want to answer is how do IR and TAPER compare to a conventional transaction protocol on top of a strong replication protocol? We implemented two transaction protocols. The first is based on OCC, and the next one is based on uh, locking. The locking-based implementation is very similar to Spanner's read-write uh, transaction protocol. So here I'm showing a latency versus throughput graph. The throughput is given in the number of retwist transactions per second, and the latency is the average latency of a retwist transaction. So the green and yellow line, those are our conventional protocols with strong replication, and the blue line is taper. As you can see right away, TAPER reduces the latency compared to our conventional protocols. And this isn't hugely surprising. TAPER is able to have the round trips or have the commit latency in most cases. And so it reduces the overall latency of the transaction. The other thing that you can see is that TAPER provides about 3x the throughput of conventional protocols on strong replication layers. And this is because uh, we've gotten rid of that bottleneck. We have no ordering, so we don't need a leader to order transactions anymore. So based on this experiment, we can conclude that TAPER and IR, the co-design, is able to improve both latency and throughput compared to conventional protocols on top of strong replication. The next question we wanted to answer was, what happens to TAPER transactions when there are IR inconsistencies? So as I mentioned before, when you read it an inconsistent replica, it's possible that your transaction might have to later abort. So in this experiment, we're testing our OCC-based conventional protocol on strong replication against TAPER, and uh, we're increasing the contention along the x-axis, so there's more contention as we move over to the right. And then we're showing the abort rate along the y-axis in terms of uh, aborted transactions compared to committed transactions. And as you can see, oh, and the scale is logarithmic. And as you can see, um, as expected, as the contention increases, the abort rate also goes up for our OCC protocol. Now, you might think when you look at this line, okay, the blue line's gonna be somewhere above that green line and hopefully it'll be pretty close, otherwise we're gonna be sad, right? 
Well, actually, we found that Taper has a lower abort rate than conventional OCC on top of a strong replication protocol. In fact, at low contention, Taper has 10x lower abort rate. And even at high contention, Taper has a 50% lower abort rate than the OCC-based transaction protocol. The reason for this, we found, is that IR reduces the latency between the prepare and the commit messages during two-phase commit. So you're reducing the probability that a conflicting transaction is going to come along and have to abort. So from this experiment, we're able to conclude that instead of hurting Taper's abort rate, IR surprisingly helps Taper's abort rate. OK. now. Some of you out there are probably wondering, well, all of this talk of strong consistency is great, but what if I use something truly web scale, like MongoDB? Aren't I just going to get 10x the throughput of Taper if I were to you know, use one of these weak consistency systems? Well, to answer this question, we ran an experiment for Taper against some widely used uh, weak consistency systems using the YCSBT benchmark. I'm showing peak throughput along the y-axis here. So taper is the blue bar. And when we look at MongoDB, MongoDB actually provides slightly lower peak throughput than taper. Cassandra provides slightly better peak throughput. And Redis provides about 2x the peak throughput of taper. And so unlike uh, what you might expect, it's not a 10x difference, but there's definitely a difference in performance when you're talking about strong consistency versus weak. Because remember that Taper is still having to coordinate those strong distributed transactions, whereas these other systems are all providing some limited transaction model with weak consistency. The other thing to note is that we found that Taper actually has the same or lower latency than all of these systems. So we conclude from this example, from this experiment, that yes, Taper and IR can make distributed transactions more affordable. I have some related work that apparently I don't have time to talk about. Uh, so to wrap up, um, we showed that existing transactional storage systems uh, are wasting work by using strong replication with a strong transaction protocol. Instead, we co-designed Taper and IR in order to provide linearizable transaction ordering using completely unordered operations. And in doing so, we were able to improve the throughput by 3x and reduce the commit latency by 2x compared to conventional protocols. Thank you, and I'll take questions. Jeff Kenning, Harvey Mudd College. Um, you're using a global clock, well, a loosely synchronized global clock, um, and one thing you didn't mention in your talk is how do you, you have to have some kind of a window on that clock to be able to know at some point that there are no, not going to be any more transactions arriving with a certain timestamp. So how do you manage that window? Um, we actually don't need a window. The, the clock is purely for performance purposes. Um, what we do instead is we just check using OCC for conflicts. And so if your transaction shows up way, way in the past, we'll just have to abort the transaction. We'll, we actually do a retry sequence. So you can take a look at the paper for that protocol, where um, you know, the replica will send back what its clock is, and the client can retry using the updated clock information. Chris Frost from Samsara. Uh, I wanted to first say that I, I think you're reapproaching the co-design of these two layers to be really interesting, and the, the, um, the trade-offs you get for performance are exciting. I had a question in the spanner system. Their design of their transactions with replication allow them to perform reads by talking to a single node, and they're, they're able to talk to slaves, not just the leader. And I was wondering, in Taper, uh, how does the read-only transactions uh, work, and how did you think about these trade-offs? Um, yeah, so in Taper, we focused on the read-write transactions. Um, we're using OCC, so the, well, we don't have a leader, so, you can, so the replicas can do reads anywhere. Um, 
if some of the replicas are particularly laggy, it might impact the abort rate like we saw. Um, but actually, uh, you know, in talking about spanner, I think taper and spanner in terms of read-write transactions and read-only transactions could be very successfully combined to get you high performance for both. Thank you. That was a really nice talk. Um, I just had a quick question. Um, when you showed us that um, uh, Cassandra was giving double the performance and, and MongoDB a little bit, uh, you didn't tell us what frequency of inconsistencies those other systems were having. Did you measure that? We, we didn't. Um, I, uh, when you say inconsistencies, you mean sort of like anomalies, right? Well, it was like there, was there a subset that was consistent and then some percentage of the time when it was giving a result that a serializable database would not have given? Yeah, no, we don't, we don't have a measurement for that. Uh, Gun Su, uh, Cornell University. Um, so I really greatly enjoyed the talk, but um, there is one thing that's a little confusing to me. Your protocol claims to be a single round protocol that implements linearizability, which is a very strong property that allows me to implement consensus. And yet by the FLP result, we know that that's not possible. You cannot have a protocol that takes a deterministic finite number of steps and achieves consensus. How do you reconcile these two facts? Um, so the single round is, um, I guess I would say optimistic, right? If there's agreement, you can, get, um, you can get consensus, right? And then we need another round for the slow path if there's inconsistencies. So if that's still two rounds. That's still a finite number. And FLP says you cannot have a bound K. Um, I mean, it's very similar to the fast Paxos protocol in terms of, uh, oh, no, sorry. No, fast Paxos oh, I see. has a, has has a an, leader, yes. Has an, no, uh, yeah, has sure. an infinite path. Sure, right. So um, the interesting thing about our protocol is essentially that um, I would say every round, the, the client is essentially the leader. And we have a synchronization protocol um, later that if the client ends up failing, we'll clean up by voting the client out and then finishing the operation. You should take a look at the paper. It, I think it should become pretty clear okay, what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. The, um, the multiple replicas are there to make sure you, you know, really have all your data despite catastrophe, uh, yet they're not all quite in synchronization with each other. They're some, some are lagging behind and catching up. What can you say about what you have when one of those servers goes completely gone and you try to reconstruct? What's the probability that you're really going to get a consistent uh, situation and not have lost data? Uh, so we provide the... Um, uh, guarantee that for up to F failures out of any 2F plus 1, there will be no lost data. Because everything has to be committed at a majority, if that 